Good morning, everybody. So today's video at the beginning, just a small, small rant, and it's mainly for the, the buyers out there. One thing I've noticed as being a home inspector, after I go over all my findings, there's a certain level of tension there, right? Because a lot of people don't know things about homes. They don't know how much money this is going to cost and they almost feel like they're stuck. You know, you already paid for your option period, you spent all that time, time is money, you, your agent's been dragging you to no, who knows how many houses, right? Like, and they have some stress behind it, hoping you, you purchase the property, you've told all your friends that your, your offer was accepted, but I just wanna let you know, you are not stuck. All you need to do is take this inspection report and take literally just go to Google and Google how much does it cost to replace a panel box? How much is an average roof repair? You know, how much does it cost to replace a toilet? Stuff like that. Create a spreadsheet and see if that house meets your tolerances it, or your bank account mainly. Does it meet your bank account's tolerances? So make sure that you know you're not stuck you have the option to move on to the next property and keep looking. And when it comes to the real estate agents, remember, lose the house, don't lose your client. All right, 1980s home, and today's giveaway is a 511 tactical hat. So I am running low on my prizes. They are going down, but the new battle box is coming. But hey, it's still a sweet hat. So please, if you would like to win this hat, please hit that like button and leave a comment. And don't forget, always subscribe so you can catch our once a week video. All right, let's go check it out. So as I'm walking up, I notice the doors open. Brendan doesn't normally do that. And the first thing I see is this. So this is, a, this is gonna be a good one. As a home buyer, one of the first things that you wanna do is come over to one of these units. You can see this unit's obviously old. Train is a really good unit, but just come over here to the label, which is typically on one of the corners. And you can see right here, this is from 1998. So this unit is 22 years old. It's obviously not working because you saw the filters on the inside. So make sure that whenever you're putting in offers, you keep in mind that you're probably gonna have to buy an AC unit. You can try to negotiate on it, but they don't have to do anything. So we have original furnace too. In Houston, these original furnaces, especially trains, they last a long time. If I was buying this home and it was 22 years old, I wouldn't even flinch. These things are pretty much beasts uh, in the marketplace. But the next thing is the coils. You know, you got R22 Freon. You can see the rust at the bottom of your coil housing. The pan's full of water. Uh, you know this thing's old, it's at the end of its life, and it's got to go. So you know coming into this property, you're probably going to have, no, not probably, you're going to have to replace an AC unit. And whenever they give you that budget, they're going to look around, and they're going to see all of this old duct work. You can see they've had issues in the past, obviously. It's not raised off the floor. And, you know, this this stuff is known to cause condensate and cause issues uh, with water stains in your property. So uh, this is gonna be one of, probably one of the major items on this property. The next thing is, is uh, they added CSST into the house. CSST is allowed, but it needs to be bonded. And this is probably not bonded properly. It never is. So um, things to look out for. Other things with the duct work, you can see the tapes pulling loose in several locations. So you know you're gonna have a lot of air leaks in this property. And then also they were using duck, t duck tape, not duct tape. So there are two different types of tape. So the duct work does, is in need of replacement. Um, also missing insulation on the side, but a positive note, you can see all the insulation has been updated at one time, but things that kind of stick out to me is you have areas that are dug out around the galvanized water lines. So that should, send some red flags and let's go over there and check it out okay i made my way over here so we do see that we have had prior repairs on it you can't really see it that well and i can't get any closer and hold the camera at the same time so just bear with me but you can see the fresh white tape over there and you can see the uh, repaired connections but also you can see that i'm not really seeing any rust stains they have done some work on it in the past and 
We'll just inform the client they have galvanized water lines and there's been prior repairs. And that still goes in with my rule of thumb in the past is if you've had issues in one spot with galvanized water lines, you're gonna have issues in the future. So we just wanna inform them that they wanna start budgeting to replace this stuff. Another call out on the AC is you always wanna fo follow the, the drain lines and you can see right here, this drain line is it's terminating into an old plumbing stack these tend to leak and they're also not allowed anymore so you'll add in the report repairs that need to be done no but they'll probably move it whenever they put in the new HVAC system okay so over here you can see where they've done some prior repairs the galvanized water lines too so they've been repairing this stuff in several areas in this property okay so it's kind of hot up here so um there's a few things that stick out to us right we have galvanized water lines they have had a lot of repairs in the past we have dissimilar metals at the water heater the duct work is old and it needs to be replaced and the ac unit's just not working and it's leaking right now one thing that we will do when we leave the property is shut that thing off to help prevent any future damage to the property and we'll also let the uh, listing agent know as we leave to let them know that the ac is off and why um, but remember 1980s home you know it hasn't been kept up hasn't been maintained very well we're gonna find stuff like this so if you get in and the home doesn't look like it's maintained we're gonna find this pretty much every time One thing uh, the listing said it said it had brand new vinyl windows so ignore everything else it has brand new windows We've been looking for it and we knew that it was going on. So we know that there has been previous foundation repair. So check this guy out. So previous foundation repair in this area. So if you see these blocks, we know we've had foundation repairs. Just judging by the color, this is probably old. So we know we have old foundation repairs. Then look right here. You have a, a step crack coming up, coming up. Look at your window. And then we have some separation at the top of the window. So we know this wall is starting to move again. And we know we've had foundation repairs, but let's try to judge why this wall is moving right here, right? It's always, always due to water. So, you know, follow the water. So we got coming down, following the water, and we have a low spot right here. So during heavy rains or anything, water always sits in this location and it caused this wall to move. You improve the grading and drainage, your walls will stop moving. Okay, so we got a lot going on over here. This is your, your secondary drain line to your AC. So if this is leaking, it's put in front of a window on purpose. It's, it's to warn you that something's going on upstairs. It doesn't mean redirect the water over here. So we have wood rot. We have a constant source of moisture. We have wood to ground contact. I'm telling you, we can't dig in here, we can't rip this up. I can 99% sure we have termite activity over here. We're in downtown Houston. I mean, there's no reason why termites should not be over here. Poorly maintained, it hasn't been looked at for a while. Wood rot, water, they have everything they need. Check this guy out, yeah. You got some wood rot on the, the decks. You can see, look. Yeah, so wood rot on deck, so we need to make sure that we report on every single one of these items so they can build their checklist to see if this house meets their tolerance. Okay, so I'm gonna cover the panel box. This is dangerous in the home inspector world because everyone has an opinion when it comes to panel boxes. I've seen perfect panel boxes and home inspectors still find a way to write something wrong. So if you are in the comment section, feel free, write up even more of what I'm calling out. I'm only going to call out some of the major stuff in this panel box today. So the very first thing I notice when I open up the panel box is we have aluminum wiring. So if you have aluminum wiring, you want to remember your wire sizes change. Also, you want to make sure you check your receptacles and switches to make sure that they're installed properly with antioxidant gel. The next thing that sticks out to me is that the neutral wires are double tapped. So if they are double tapped like that, Square D only wants one wire per lug. So that's something that you're going to need to call out. The next thing is you have several different name brands of breakers 
in the panel box. I don't even know what name brand that one is. And this one doesn't belong either in this one as well. You can see it's, it's loose inside the panel box. Square D and other manufacturers only want their style of breaker for their panel boxes. So this is probably the homeowner, the breaker kept tripping or something and they replaced the breakers with off-brand breakers. So you wanna make sure that you do document that and recommend for an electrician to replace these because they will cause issues down the line. So that's a quick breakdown on the panel box. I'll hit more and more as we go just to see if we can see any damage. All right, let's move further on in this property. Another good practice is to scan it with your infrared scan. If these neutral wires were causing any trouble, you'd see them starting to overheat. Uh, I'm not really seeing that today. You can see some areas where power is being pulled, but the temperature it's pretty good, Doesn't nothing crazy alarming uh, right now. Okay, check this out. This is the, uh, the garage. We have some upheaval come, going on here. And all right, so we talk about garage cracks all the time and how they're normal, but I'm letting you know, this is not a normal garage crack. So we have significant movement over here. Oh, what is that? Look at that. Oh yeah, right there. Right there, that is a termite shelter tube. Check this guy out, it's active, I want to, oh yeah. Maybe. I'll go to the other side to see if I can find him. Okay, so this is the back side. You can obviously see the wood rotten damage, but you know, if you have a crack like this, the termites can actually just come up through the crack. So we're not really seeing any shelter tubes over here. So we're gonna recommend for treatment on this uh, is the side of the structure. Okay, so for the winner of last week's video, Isis, in honor of finding termites, who won that prize? Hey guys, thanks so much for entering the giveaway. It's that time of the week to pick the giveaway winner. So don't forget to like and comment below so you can enter this week's giveaway. Thank you so much. All right, let's see who won. All right, let's go ahead and see who won. And the winner is Javier Garza. So you can go ahead and message us on Facebook, Instagram, or email us at info at aactionhouston.com. Thanks so much for entering, and I hope you guys will enter the next one. We like to use the infrared cameras uh, for leaks underneath sinks and stuff on our second pass. We'll look the first time, but you know, you can't really miss that. But you can, you could possibly miss that. Maybe, I don't know, but yeah, so use the infrared from, camera. From, from here, it looks it, it could look looks dry. fine. Yeah, but with the camera, oh, oh. with the camera, <laughs> it's wet. Yep. <laughs> Brendan here, and I uh, just wanted to cover one thing real quick. Uh, whenever we are inspecting, yes, we do find a lot, especially on a home like this. And a lot of people always ask, "Will you? Bu would you buy this property or not?" And it's not if I would buy this property or not, it's if you would buy this property or not. So we list all the facts and then it's up for you to determine if you can purchase it or not. So remember, don't ask your home inspector that. We don't care. We just find stuff. I'll buy anything at the right price. The right price? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, yeah. If they come down, I don't know. A butt ton of money because they don't want to handle these problems, right? You, you yeah, I'll be happy to buy that yeah. house. Yeah, why not? Everything's always an investment. Just don't put yourself in a bind. Yeah, so galvanized water lines going out. First sign is uh, low water pressure on the hot water side. Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap this up here, but I mean, like, look at this. Here you go. You have a leaky faucet. You don't even have to test it. You can see where you have the algae buildup and the discoloration, so we know this is leaking over time. The outlet that's being held together by electric tape, we are not even, we didn't even test this, that's too dangerous, but we have, we have enough to write it up to let them know that it needs to be repaired. So, I mean, yeah, we have all kinds of stuff here. This is a, this is a good one. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap the video up here, and it's funny, some people will comment or they'll say, man, are all the homes bad? No, I just go to the bad ones. There's plenty of good ones out there. And uh, if, I, if I did a video of all the good stuff, it's not as entertaining. So remember, if you wanna win that hat, 
make sure that you hit that uh, like, comment, and leave a comment, and then uh, catch us on the next one then, guys. Thanks. Bye.